You're Retro Trekking with the Caramel Apples Podcast, the apple snack that brings you a retro vibe, both crunchy and sweet, with your hosts, Kennedy Rizzo and Cooper Lee. archivers welcome to this week's apple snack (laughs) you know we thought it would be fun you know to kind of explore the subject of close kinships yes um there's there's many many different connections but there's one in particular that we thought we would really explore today and as you know kindred and i are sisters oh no (laughs) (laughs) and are extremely close so um just how close are we kenny Oh my goodness, we are extremely close. <laughs> um, I mean, like for years, we have been partners in crime, um, all the way up until our wonderful hubby hubs came into the picture. And... <laughs> but no, seriously, we were travel buddies. We've always been roommates since we were very, very small. Yep. Um, it was almost like an unspoken rule that, you know, also to be in our girl squad. <laughs> <laughs> that, that you literally had to be a pair of sisters I mean that's just that was the prerequisite uh, it seemed like you're right I mean it just kind of happened that way but it really does seem like that was definitely you had to check that box <laughs> oh yeah totally and and we checked many <laughs> yes <laughs> you know but except for a couple exceptions it was mostly sister sets for our girl squad <laughs> Come to think about it, it really was. Yeah. You know, so our entire life from sharing a room, as you, you stated, and, you know, mom dressing us like twins, um, <laughs> and the infamous, slightly irritating questions from people growing up from, are you twins to which one are you? Oh, my God. All <laughs> the time on a loop. <laughs> it's like, how do you not know this? But it, it, it didn't stop them. You know? Looking back at it, hindsight, you know, I'm kind of wondering if it was just conversation starters. I don't know, but it's kind of a lazy one and kind of irritating, like we mentioned, but um, it was, (laughs) you know, aside from that, you know, being so extremely close, it is nice if you are fortunate enough that if you have a sister, she will likely always be in your corner. Oh, totally. And, And that's really the beauty of familial connections. Yeah. I mean, anyway, but like if, like even with brothers, you know, if they're tight and close, they look out for one another. But sisters, you know, like we have that nurturing side, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's sad that there are a lot of people that don't have that. It is sad. You mm-hmm. know, and, you know, we had mentioned our girl squad and how there were seven, there were several sets of sisters. Can you kind of, you know, in a roundabout, can you vaguely remember how many sets? I'd say, was it? Six, <laughs> six, oh, maybe even seven. That is a ready-made slumber party the minute we get together. I mean, you did not have to do <laughs> anything else, right? I mean, seriously. Yes, those slumber parties were epic. They were, and they were like probably 99% of the time um, hosted by one set of parents. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Oh, poor people. <laughs> I know. I feel so sorry for them. We saw them not too long ago, which was so nice. So it makes they're you probably glad those... they were all grown now. But Yeah, it makes you think of those cartoons where, you know, the line of dogs or whatever. And they said, all right, who's volunteering? And they all step back to parents. The, <laughs> same, the same parents step back. And then the ones we always had the summer party at, they were always like, oh, I guess it's us. <laughs> That's totally them. <laughs> <laughs> they rolled with it. <laughs> they were champs. They definitely were. They they took one for the team most of the time. So thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we actually still have people, you know, as adults, you know, like just for conversation, but they're, I think sometimes some people just like to see if they can get your goat. Yeah. I, there's a couple in my mind, you know, and they just come around and they're like, 
hi and then they'll say our opposite name so like they'll yes. be talking to me and say hi cooper and it's like you know been well i'm not cooper i am kennedy Rizzo, whatever. right they you know, know this they know this yeah sit yourself down quit bugging <laughs> me i got other stuff to do all right <laughs> <laughs> nobody want to talk to you anyway <laughs> But so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that the whole sister vibe, that's, that's, that's goals. Hashtag goals. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) So I couldn't have said it better myself. This is a great starter for our week, but in our apple snack this week, we're looking closer at sisters um, who likely had their own language or at least who could finish each other's sentences. Like, they know a sister like no other. And we're talking about the sisterhood of twins. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. So on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> now, we can't have a conversation about twins um, without referencing a couple funny 1988 comedies. You know, all of them, they fit in our parameters. Love it. So um, that being coincidentally the movie Twins. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> that was, was a stretch. One. <laughs> <laughs> and that was starring Schwarzenegger and DeVito. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this one is classically funny because of the unlikelihood of them being twins, right? Right. And it is truly hilarious. So I have to say, if you haven't watched it, please put it on your to-do list. You have to check it out. It's some classic 80s comedy right there for you. (laughs) Um, Also, along with our theme of Twin Sisters, there's another movie, and I'd like to see if you remember it, um, Kennedy. It was called Big Business, and it featured Bette Midler and Lily Tomlin. Okay, I... The title sounds familiar, but I honestly, I'm not recalling it. Okay, cool. Um, This is one that we went with several of our girl squad to the small town cinema that we had. And um, it's, it's really about two sets of twins that get misplaced at birth. <laughs> <laughs> and one, I believe, goes to like the country area and the other is like in a real posh, like they're the rich ones and they're in like the city or whatever. So they're long lost twin sisters and, you know, watch it, check it out, you know, see how the story unfolds. It's cute. It definitely has 80s all over it. So you'll enjoy it. It is truly hilarious. I am (laughs) going to put that on my to-do list. I mean, just hearing about it, I'm still vague. I'm still vague. Ah. But that sounds totally retro vibe. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You'll have to put it on your to-do list. I'm doing that now. Okay, let's okay. put that down. Let's put that on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know about you, Coop, but my default setting for twins is normally the identical set. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's take a brief look at a few who took center stage under the caramel apple spotlight, shall we? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So, you know, this one, I, I would like to say this probably not even a stretch, that they are probably the most famous twins if not the famous most famous they would be like second on the list okay and that would be the Olsen sisters the Olsen twins oh yes yes I mean we grew up I mean they were tiny so they grew up on screen but I mean we watched them when they were little girls so Mm -hmm. um, and they played the same character that being uh, Michelle Tanner on Full House, and that was in 1987 that show started. And I remember we tuned into the show. Yeah, we did in 1987. You can't go wrong with that year. It's a wonderful year. I know, I know. That's like hitting the <laughs> nail on the head proverbially all the time during that year. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Mary Kate and Ashley, they they were heavy into their craft, right? They they were honing their skills. They were getting into different business ventures. Mm-hmm. Um, they were really nailing things down. And before they were teenagers, they were millionaires. That's right. Uh huh. That is yeah. crazy, insane. Yeah. You know, and it all started from them playing the same character, right? That is insane. That is pretty insane. <laughs> <laughs> and they're pretty identical. So um, it's it's really cool that um, that they are a duo that 
they just became a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And I think even now they're probably, I doubt that they live anywhere nearby each other. You know, like you said, sometimes there's identity crisis. I'm sure it happens from time to time, you know, even in twin sister sets, maybe a lot more in twin sister sets, maybe. Um, But, you know, probably wherever they live, even if they're states apart, they probably do remain close at some point, you know. So we could say that they came, they saw, and they conquered. They they run things. That is totally cool. And I think you're right. They, I think they did want individual um, interactions going through life. I mean, they're twins, but they wanted that individuality. Sure. And I mean, we're not twins, but, you know, like we can relate to that. But I can only imagine that'd be on steroids for twins. Sure. Absolutely. But like you said, I think it's awesome that they are thick as thieves, you know, they're still there for each other. And they're like, yeah, that's just what it is. No matter what's going on outside of what's going on here, our sisterhood, that's what it is. So. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. We'll keep going then. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now um, moving on down our little list here, we're going to talk about gum. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to crank it back a couple of years and go retro. Thinking about Wrigley's Double Mint Gum. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and they were notorious. They had this niche for advertising when it came to the dynamic duos, a.k.a. twins. Yeah, that was like baked into their um, advertising, right? I mean, the name of their brand. <laughs> Just, yes. It, it lent itself to this. <laughs> it did. That's totally, that's, that is genius. Double Mint. You're right. So this started way back in the day, but let's go to the 70s and 80s, shall we? Let's do that. Okay. So there was um, a June and Patricia Mackerel. They were actually showcased in the 70s. Okay. Not real familiar with them. No. Um, Doing research, we saw, you know, pictures of them and that still didn't ring a bell. So, (laughs) but they are definitely twins and it worked, you know, I mean, they sold probably loads and oodles of gum <laughs> um then we have uh linda and lisa yokobinas yeah that seems right okay and they started their career off with the brand in 1985 which is more in our retro memories yeah um and their stint for double mint wrigley's double mint gum was more than 10 years wow that's some staying power yeah that's called getting checks mad checks <laughs> Just for looking like your mirror image sister. Oh, wow. Yeah, for a, what, a 30-second spot? Yes. <laughs> they look at each other, look in the mirror, and say, thank you, sis. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, they kind of separated after that. Um, oh. they, there goes, they're looking for that individuality, I'm sure. They, I mean, they got, probably got married, had kids, or families of their own. Yeah. Um, but hopefully they reconnected with each other and still have that ride or die connection as twins and sisters all whacked in one. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a good outcome. So we'll hope for that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to talk about ones we really are familiar with. And who are they, Cooper Lee? Uh that would be Jen and Lee's a sickle. Oops. Liz Segal, right? Okay, yes, yes. And um, yes, I think with their commercials, that would be the first go-to when you think of the Double Mint Twins. I can see them. Yeah, um, and, and also that might really lend itself to the fact that they had their own show called Double Trouble. That show was bomb diggity. It was, it was really good, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> We totally tuned in for that. Um, definitely can't remember what night that came on, but I remember we tuned in for that one because we we really did enjoy that. So um, very cool. Congratulations, girls, for that. Um, <laughs> fun fact, though, their sister is someone that a lot of our listeners know. I love this. Yes. And that is Katie Singer. Um she played Leela from Futurama. I love that show. That was so, in, I don't know. It is very, very entertaining. That was my hubby hub show, too. He loved Futurama. <laughs> you go, hubba hub. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Makubi. And um, <laughs> Peggy Bundy 
which maybe people would be like, oh, yes, we know. And if you if you see a picture of her or you can think of her and you see the her sisters, you can see the resemblance. Bingo. Yes. Yeah. And actually, same with the Olsen girls and their yes. sister. Yes. They actually look like they could be triplets, honestly. They do. <laughs> Elizabeth Olsen. Yes. That's yeah. her. Yeah, she, she's in the Marvel, the MCU universe. She's a uh, one of the character su- superheroes in that. Oh, Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> that's cool that even in these um, not directly related, like they're not in the sister twin set, but being in the family, there's a strong resemblance. So that's really really cool. Oh, totally. Yeah. So yeah, she played Peggy Bundy, um, and married with children. Oh 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 oh. Okay, so Double Trouble actually ran from 84 to 85. So it wasn't really, really long. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. But they both had other title work as actors. Um, but I believe Liz went on to focus more on the writing side of things and production side. Okay. Um, and I believe that Gene kind of stuck with more of the acting. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So, pretty cool. And I'll tell you, um, 80 sitcoms back then, they were total vibe. They were. I mean, you could just sit down and enjoy yourself. We'll have to do a whole thing on that. Because, I mean, there was a feel about those. Yes, I I concur. Let's do that. Okay, because, I mean, like, that was just a good time. It was. Yeah, and you connect with... Yeah, we'll do that. That's just wonderful stuff right there. (laughs) Um, But real quick, um, one more set to talk about with the Double Mint Twins. These two were showcased in a little film called Spaceballs. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, Spaceballs. Yes, and they actually, they were committed to chew gum. So this was their, <laughs> yeah, this was their charge in the movie. Yes, totally, totally typical Mel Brooks fashion. He's nuts. His films are nuts. <laughs> a, I mean, he has really carved out a niche for himself. I mean... <laughs> I mean, come on. They were chewing gum for, for their little job. Can we sign up? Can we? Can they hire us? Hire us, please. Yes. We, we, we are some gum chewing fools. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, too, because Doublement, the fact that we are talking about the Doublement twin sets, you know, Doublement was our mom's favorite gum. She loved Doublement gum. Like, we thought she had stock in it, right? Oh, totally. <laughs> Totally. She pulled that little green package out of her purse. <laughs> She'd be sitting there and our mom would crack and pop her gum. She was. <laughs> she would. Yeah. She would. Yeah. She could I get think... a gold medal in it. Do you remember she, she told us that she would do that in school and she'd get in trouble for it too. Our mom was totally honored. <laughs> <laughs> she was honorary. <laughs> she was. But, but what were the twins' names in Spaceballs? Ah. What were their names? Let's see. Is it uh, Diane and Denise Gallup? That was it. Okay. That was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and also there was a set of twins, Brittany and Cynthia Daniels. Okay. Yeah. That's that's not a real familiar set. Um, but hey, if they did it, they did it. They did it. There we got them in there. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> so, you know, before we, you know, we end this fabulous discussion it has been so much fun you know because we're (laughs) sisters and we love that we do yeah so if we could talk about this close kinship of twin sets it's really cool um certainly not least on our list would be randy and candy and that is both with an i in case you're wondering (laughs) (laughs) burrow and they had a few shows that they appeared in together um one of which um, we have actually already featured here on our show, and that was back in season one, and that was Dukes of Hazard. And um, Randy played Cindy Francie, and Candy played Sandy. Oh, you got all that? You got, you got yes. the three? <laughs> I'm trying. Help me. <laughs> Don't help me. <laughs> Sister power. <laughs> So, you know, that is quite the accomplishment for them. So that is really, really cool. You know, being on the Dukes of Hazard, it was the show of the time. So very, very cool for them. Yeah. And um, one more quick fun fact 
um, about Candy Burrow. Keep your antenna up. She will be making a, another splash uh, coming up in our season seven, one of our episodes. So uh, listen up for her name to be mentioned again. Ah, a little cliffhanger there. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I guess the moral of this week's apple snack is to just bring, you know, ripe attention to some of the twin sister power going. Yeah. And we know that there's many, many, many more. But for our podcast this week, we're mentioning sweet picks of the 70s and 80s to be specific. So that's, it's been a, it's been a nice little chit chat over twins and sisters in general. It has. <laughs> and I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as we did because we certainly have fun. We have fun on this show. Yeah. 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 So, you know, before we end this, Orchard Archivers, did we pick any that weren't the obvious choices? You know, please hit us back if we missed any that really stood out to you. Yeah, let's ignite this fascinating sister twin discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, sis. Bye. <laughs> and that's it for this week's Apple Snack. But as you know, there's always more where that came from. So stay tuned. Subscribe, rate, review, and spread the word. See you next time in the Retro Orchard. And thanks so much for listening.